Come in. Can you hear me now? Touch my heart we stand on your word. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Can you hear me now, Mary Ellen? Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll start at 707. You know how we do it. Holy Spirit, rain down, Jesus. Rain down. Rain down. Hallelujah. Rain down. Oh, comforter. And friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, Jesus. Rain down. Rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard, come and change our hearts as we stand on your word, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and start at, um, at 7.07, amen. If you're able to um, share this message on your page, amen. Tonight we're going to bring revelation. We're going to help people get over the hump, amen. Get through it, amen. So if you can, share it. I've made it public so you can share it. My page is private, but Bible studies we make public. Because we're trying to get the word out, amen. I pray that you're all having a very blessed evening, amen. And that you're smiling no matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hey, Pastor Trisha, how you doing this evening? Pray all is well with you and the ministry over there. Amen. I got you guys in prayer. I hope you know that. I keep you in prayer. Amen. I know that you guys endured a lot over there. But God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Amen. You guys keep pressing in, pressing on. Amen. Maybe um, I did a handball tournament in uh, in Chino uh, in 2019. Uh, it was a handball outreach tournament. I did it in Chino, California at one of the parks over there. And, um, you know, I know that, uh, that we want to go out there and do it again. And I'm looking for some collaboration. Maybe you guys can help out out there on that side of town. And if you're interested, let me know. Inbox me, send me a message, and I'll share with you what God has put in my heart and, and a couple other people's hearts out there in Southern California to do. And uh, we, we did a handball outreach tournament in 2019 in Chino. And we were supposed to do another one in 2020, but then we had the massive lockdown where nobody could do nothing. Amen? So um, if you're interested... It's just another avenue to get out there and bring the gospel to the streets and bring the people that God wants to reach. Amen. But 707, we're going to start two more minutes and I pray that uh, I pray that you allowed the Lord to, to roll to your heart, man, to prepare you for this message that you came, that you guys came, prayed up, ready to receive a word from God. Amen. Because we got to prepare our hearts. We got to prepare our hearts before we hear the message of the Lord, whether it be a Bible studies, whether it be a Sunday night service, a Sunday morning service. 
whatever, we have to prepare our hearts to receive, amen, that there's no contamination and no distractions, amen, so that we're able to ready, ready to receive God's word, amen, so I pray that, that you're prayed up, you know, we should always be prayed up, but even before we hear a message, you know, get our hearts ready to receive what God has, amen, praise the Lord, we got one more minute, and then we're going to go ahead and start and get started on the message, and I pray again, and I ask that if you could share it, share it on your page, and allow other people to, to receive the message as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get started in a bit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We'll pray for you, Sylvia. I will pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus right now. We pray for Sylvia as we lift her up, Father God. I pray that her heart and her mind be open to receive your word, Father God. We cancel out every scheme and every tactic of the enemy right now, Father God. I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around her, God, and encamp her with your angels, Father God. Let her know, Lord, your word says that you will never leave her nor forsake her, Father God. But I pray that tonight's message ministers in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Stick around, Sylvia. Listen to this message. Because the, message, the title of this message is Count It All Joy. Amen. Count It All Joy. And at 707, we're going to open with prayer. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we just come before the throne once again. As we thank you for this time and the opportunity to be right here, Father God. I ask and pray as John 3.30 says, Lord, that, that I must decrease, God, that you must increase, Father God, that you would have your way, God. We invite you, Holy Spirit, that you continue to move in the power and the glory that you do. We ask and pray that every heart and every mind be open and be receptive to your word tonight, Father God, that you just move me aside, Lord, and let your word go forth, Father God. Let's, Father God, tear down the works of the enemy's hand, Father God, and, and allow your people to become victorious people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the title of this message is Count It All Joy. Count It All Joy. What are you talking about, Pastor John? Well, we're going to get down into it right now. Amen. Count It All Joy. We're going to go to the book of John chapter 16. The book of John chapter 16, and we're just going to dive right into this message and allow God to do what he wants to do. Amen. In the book of John chapter 16, is broken down into four different sections. Amen. The first portion is where... Jesus warns the disciples about things that are to come, amen? Things that are to come, he warns the disciples, amen? And the second portion is where Jesus says, he promises the coming of the Holy Spirit, amen? He promises that we are going to receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to help us, he's going to guide us and lead us, and he's going to be our comforter and counselor, amen? The third section, Jesus tells them about his death and his resurrection, amen? And if you know the book of John, and if you're in John chapter 16, the disciples are like, what? What are you talking about? Amen. He's talking about the death and his resurrection. Then he talks about the prayer promises that anything that we ask in his name, he will give it to us. Amen. Anything that we ask in his name. So it's broken down into those sections. The first one is he warns his disciples about things that are to come. The second is where Jesus promises the coming of the Holy Spirit. The third is Jesus tells them about his death and resurrection. Then he talks about prayer. He says, anything that you ask in my name, it shall be given to you according to his will, though. Amen. And then I want to speak on the end of the passage of John chapter 16. Jesus says this, John 16, 32, he says, Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered. Amen. For you to be scattered, each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me, Jesus says. See, see, I'm not alone. God is with me. Verse 33, he says, These things that I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world, he says, you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. Amen. So he tells the disciples in the book of John chapter 16, he tells them about these things that are going to take place. He's warning them. Amen. He tells them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. He's going to be our comforter and our counselor and our friend. Amen. He tells them about his death and resurrection. And then he closes that passage of scriptures off where he talks about in verse 32. He says, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulations, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Amen? He warns you and I through the word and the word that he spoke that we are going to face trial, we are going to face trouble, we are going to face tribulations. Amen? But he first says, in me, in me you will have peace. 
But in this world, amen, you will have tribulations, you will have trials, you will have troubles. He warns you and I that we are going to encounter these things. He says, but in me, you will have peace. You have to understand this, that when you focus on Jesus, in the book of Hebrews, that's not even part of my message, Hebrews chapter 12, he says, he says, we fix our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith, amen? Who is Christ Jesus? What happens, though, is so many times that we face, people face encounter, encounter trials and tribulations, and they tend to focus on the trials and the tribulations. They begin to focus on the troubles that they're going through, and then they begin to think that they're bigger than what they are, amen? But Jesus told us, he says, look it, in this world, you're going to face trials, you're going to face tribu tribulations, you're going to face troubles. He goes, but in me, in me, he says, you, have, you will have peace. See, if you remain in God, you're going to have peace. And tonight, I pray that you get some revelation. Sylvia, I pray that you're still here because the Lord wants to speak to you. I pray that you get some revelation because I'm going to equip you tonight on showing you and telling you how to overcome the trials and tribulations that you're going through and to walk in the peace of God while you're going through them. Amen. Because Jesus says, in me, you will have peace. In me, you will have peace, he says. So if you remain in Christ... If you remain with your eyes on Jesus, no matter what's coming to you from the left nor to the right, it ain't going to affect you. It ain't going to affect you. See, I've learned that when things come, they're going to come regardless. I can't change the, the, the outcome. I mean, I can't, I could change the outcome by the way I respond to the things that come. But I can't stop the trials and tribulations that are going to come. They're going to come. Amen? They're going to come. Jesus warns us in this world that we will face trials and tribulations, but he says, take courage. He says, I have overcome the world. The Greek word and definition overcome is nikao. Nikao, N-I-K-A-O, nikao means overcome. And this is, I mean, is the word of overcome. And this is what it means to conquer, to carry off with victory, to come out victorious. To the Christians, to those that hold fast their faith, even unto death against the power of their foes. Amen? And temptation and persecutions, they will come out victorious if we remain in Jesus. If we fix our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. But if you're looking at the circumstances, well, guess what? Your eyes are no longer on God. Your eyes are no longer on Christ. You begin to look at this little anthill, this little molehill that you begin to make it into a mountain. Amen? Because you allow these thoughts to come into your mind, to overcome your mind, and begin to make you think about other things and the outcome of things that the way they may turn out. But if you focus on Jesus, as he said, you will have peace. Amen? We are to equip the saints to help them to overcome. I'm equipping you guys. Amen? These messages that I bring across are to equip the saints. To help you to become victorious in your walk. To know your identity in Christ. To know who you are in God. Amen. Your identity isn't in your job. Your identity isn't in your relationship. Your identity isn't in your ministry. Your identity is in Christ. Amen. And when you understand that. You understand who you are. Who you understand who God is in your life. You are going to be just like Jesus. And overcome the world. Overcome your trials. Overcome your tribulations. Amen. He says that you're going to come out victorious. That's what the word overcome means. Amen. He didn't say I overcame. He said I overcome the world. I didn't overcame it. I overcome it. Amen. Meaning he's defeated it. He's defeated the trials and tribulations. They're going to come. And I pray that you grab a hold of this message. Amen. In James chapter 1 verse 2 it says this. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and, endure, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Count it all joy. Amen? How, how, how can I count it all joy, Pastor John? You don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand what I go through. Amen? Amen? Not that my trials and tribulations are greater than yours, but see, you don't understand. I go through them as well, but I've learned how to overcome as Jesus spoke to me, man. Amen. And you, the way you learn how to overcome, you get into this word and you read this word. You stay in the word. You stay in prayer. You stay in fasting. Amen. You stay connected to Christ. Amen. So that when these things come, they're not going to affect you. 
They're going to come. They're going to come. He told us they're going to come. But they're not going to affect you, amen? They're not going to. You're, you're going to learn to train yourself. In the military, when I was in the military, in boot camp, they trained us. I entered into the army and knew nothing about the military. But they trained us. They trained us seven days a week. They trained us. They equipped us for battle. They gave us everything that we needed to know. Every weapon of warfare, every tactic, every scheme, how to overcome. Amen? How to defeat the enemy. And the same thing right here with God. We have the word of God from Genesis to Revelation that gives us everything that we need to overcome. How to defeat the enemy. But the problem is that a lot of you don't read your word. You rely on the pastor on Sundays. You rely on the minister on Tuesday nights. You rely on the minister on Wednesday nights of your service. And you don't read your word yourself. Amen? So when the trials and the tribulations come, how can you stand? You've got nothing to stand on. Amen? The word of God says in the book of Matthew, he says, Be like the one who built his house on a solid foundation so when the storms come, you're still standing. Don't be like the one that built his house on the sand so when the storms come, your house collapses. Build it on a solid foundation, which is Christ Jesus. Amen? Because James says, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. Various trials. They're going to come. Amen? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Verse 4 says, And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Count it all joy. Amen. Remember in the book of uh, Exodus, when Moses, when they were in battle, and Moses kept his arms raised, amen, they would defeat the enemy. But when his arms began to fall down, they began to lose the battle, amen. They began to lose the battle. So Aaron and Hur, one got on one side and one got on the other side, man, and they kept his arms raised. See, when you raise your hands in church, See, some of you go through trials and tribulations and you can't raise your hands in church, man. You can't praise God the way you want to praise God because you're so consumed by the trials and tribulations that you're facing, amen? And the enemy keeps you oppressed and you're not allowed. You're not allowed because of the way you're walking. You're not allowed. You're not capable of raising your hands to praise the Lord, man. When you get into praise and into worship, man, if you take a look like King Jehoshaphat, when the Amalekites and all these Hittites and everybody was coming against him, what did he do? He went and proclaimed a prayer and fasting, amen. And then he said, wait a minute, I'm a child of God, man. And he went to go talk to God. He went to pray to God. And he began to take God to his word. God, your word says this. God, your word says that. Then the angel of the Lord came and told him, he says, the Lord has heard your petitions. This is what God wants you to do tomorrow. You send your worshipers out there and just go worship. Amen? It's all about worship. When you can lift your hands and praise the Lord through the storms, man, you're going to be victorious. When you can raise your hands, amen, you're going to overcome. You're going to overcome just like Jesus did. Amen? Amen? I've been getting a lot of calls. A lot of calls and messages from people, amen? Text messages says for prayers. People have gone through things, amen? And they mention the devil is attacking them. People do that. Oh, the devil this, the devil that. Sometimes the people give the devil too much credit, amen? They give the devil too much credit. See, it's not always the devil. Sometimes it's, it's your decisions that you make. It's your disobedience, amen? But nevertheless, Jesus warned us that this is going to happen. How, did you, how do we overcome, huh? You stay in the Word. You stay in prayer. You stay on your knees, amen? You don't know. I don't, I don't know what you go through, but I know you're going through something. Amen? But you don't know what I go through. But I stay on my knees. I stay in prayer. I stay in God's presence, man. You know, all day to day, I took the day off from work, not going to my office, and I was just with the Lord, just praying, worship music on, just praying. Praying that this message would be effective. Praying that this message would reach the penetrate your heart, amen? To help you to overcome. So no longer, no longer can the enemy slap you around. No longer can trials and tribulations send you to and fro. Amen? But you're going to be steady in Christ. You're going to stand on solid ground. Amen. First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says this. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His grace, great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. 
Verse 4. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while it is necessary that you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith be more precious than gold, which perishes through tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 8 says, And though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And though do you, not you do not see Him now, but you believe in Him. You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Amen. That right there tells us, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See, Christ being resurrected gave you and I in hope. We have the hope of Christ in our life that no matter what comes our way, we are going to stand. No matter what trials, what tribulations, what we encounter, we will stand because we have hope in Christ Jesus. Now take a look. Verse 4. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable. You know what that means? That when you are adopted into the family of God, when you come into the family of God as a child of God, you have now obtained an inheritance which is imperishable, imperishable. It cannot become bad anymore. Amen? Undefiled, he says, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen? <coughs> Excuse me. Who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation to be revealed in the last time. You are protected by the power <coughs> excuse me, of God. Amen? Protected by the power of God. Verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice even though now for a little while if necessary, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, if necessary. It is necessary for you and I to go through some trials. Amen? It is necessary. But we are protected. We are protected. Amen? And we greatly rejoice in the midst of our trials. Man, Pastor John, you're crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. How? James says, calling it all joy. Praise the Lord. Amen? By the time we get, get in with this message, you're going to have an understanding of why you go through these trials and tribulations. Amen? It's for our benefit. It's for our good. Amen? Verse 7 says this, So that the proof, there's got to be proof. So that the proof of your faith, your faith, is more precious than gold. Your faith is more precious than gold. Amen? Which perishes, though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Verse 7 says, So that your proof, that the proof of your faith, be more precious than gold, which perishes through test, though tested by fire, See, gold has to go through the refiner's fire. Gold has to go through, through the fire to get purified so that the impurities would be removed. Amen? Gold has to go through so much to get all the impurifications out so that it becomes pure. Amen? It gets tested in the fire. Amen? So that the proof of your faith be more precious than gold with perishes through tested by fire may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Christ Jesus. See, you and I, we have to go through the refiner's fire. We have to go through the refiner's fire to get the impurities out. You and I came to God with so much contamination in our life, man. 
So much contamination from the world we brought into Christ with us, amen? And those things have to be come out. And the only way they're going to come out is going through trials and tribulations, amen? Being Going through those things, amen, so that the impurities, impurities within your life can come out. See, God is removing things, but at the same time, He's depositing things into your life. Amen? Your faith. There's got to be proof of your faith. I'm going to stand no matter what, God. Amen? There's got to be proof of your faith, which is more precious than gold. Amen? The proof that there is evidence of your faith. We must go through the refiner's fire to remove anything that is not of God in our life. Just as gold is purified through the refiner's fire. Amen? Amen? If you're not going through anything, if you're not facing trials and tribulations, you better, you better really check your walk. Amen? Because I know people that say they're Christians. And I talk to them. And some of them say, man, I don't, I don't go through trials. I don't go through tribulations. I don't go through that. Amen? You know why? Because they're not a threat. They're not committed to God. Those that are committed to the Lord, who are His children, he will discipline and he will allow you to go through the refiner's fire to make you more like Christ. Amen. So if, if, you're, pay, if you're facing trials and tribulations, James tells us to count it all joy. To count it all joy. Amen. To rejoice. Praise God, Lord, you thought of me today, God. These trials, God, is because the Lord has thought of me today. Amen. And when we're done with this, I pray that you have a deeper understanding. Amen? There's got to be proof of your faith. So why does James say count it all joy? We are being purified through our trials and tribulations. A lot of times, it's not the devil. Amen? It is God just trying to bring growth into our lives. Don't get me wrong, the devil will attack at times when you're advancing in your walk with God. But he has no power. The devil has no power over our lives. Other than what you relinquish over to him. Other than what you give him. He has no power. He's been defeated. Amen. He stands under our feet. But a lot of times, through your trials and tribulations, you allow him to grow. You allow him to come up. Amen. By entertaining thoughts in your mind that are not of God. We allow the enemy. We invite the enemy into our pity party. Amen. Don't have a pity party. Rejoice. Call it all joy. Rejoice. Rejoice that God thought of you today to bring growth into your life. Amen. Rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. Job chapter 1. Now take a look. We know the story of Job. I'm going to read it to you because I want to bring something out. Amen. Job chapter 1. <clears throat> there was a man... In the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless. He was blameless. Upright. Fearing God and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Amen. His possessions were 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels. 500 yoke of oxen. 500 female donkeys. And very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all men of the East. Amen. We know the story of Job. Now listen. His sons used to go out and hold a feast in the house of each one of on his day. And they would send word and invite three, their sisters, the three sisters to eat and drink with them. When the days of feasting had completed their cycle... Job would send word to them and consecrate them, getting them up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Job said, Perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So Job did continually. Amen. Understand that Job was um, blameless before the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that he was upright and fearing God and turned away from evil. But he had kids and went out and partied. Amen. 
and each morning he would get up and consecrate them to the Lord and he would ask for forgiveness on their behalf how many of you and this isn't even part of my message you know but how many of you go before the Lord on behalf of your children and ask God to forgive them of their sins I do it every day and every night because I know that my kids aren't serving the Lord the way they should be you know what I mean they know God because they grew up in the church but I cover my kids in prayer every day my grandkids as well and every day and every morning I ask God to forgive them of their sins at the end of the night I ask God to forgive them of the sins like I ask the Lord to forgive me of my sins that I committed throughout that day to cover them in the precious blood of the lamb and watch over them and protect your children amen because the Bible says in the book of Acts that, that, that we and our whole household will, save, will be saved. Our kids will be saved because of us. Amen. And also in the book of Acts chapter 239, he says the promise is for you and your children. The promises of salvation are for you and your children. Amen. Hold on to those things. Amen. But here was Job on behalf of his children. Amen. So um, when the days of feasting had completed their cycle, Job would send word to them and consecrate them. Getting up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all for Job. Perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Job did so continually. Now verse 6 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Amen. They came before the God. The sons of children became, came before the God. Amen. But the Bible says Satan, he came to join them. Satan comes to listen to your prayers. Satan comes to listen to what you're doing and what you're saying. Satan comes and his little cohorts, his little demons, they come to listen to what you're saying and what you're doing. Amen. The Bible says that there's nothing hidden from the eyes of the Lord. God sees all that you're doing as well. God hears everything that you say. But so does the enemy. And when you give the enemy one foothold, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 4, what he tells Abel, he says, well, if you do good, will not your countenance? He tells Cain, he says, if you do good, will not your countenance be good? He says, but if not, sin is crouching at that door waiting for you. See, all you got to do is open the door a little bit and the, the enemy comes in like a slithering snake. So when you're going through things, the enemy's listening. Are they praying? Are they talking to God? No, they're not. They're, they're, they're thoughts. Their thoughts are on their circle. Wait a minute. Let me get up in there. Let me just finagle my way in there. Amen. See, he came right here when the sons of the children of God came before God. The Bible says Satan came too. See, Satan goes to church to listen to what's going on. And sometimes he doesn't go to church. He sends some of you as the little foot soldiers to go cause division. Amen. But the enemy listens. Are you praying? Or are you focused on the world? Are you focused on circumstances? And then the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 4 that if you do good, your attitude will be good. Amen? If you do good, if you pray, if you read, if you stand on solid ground, you'll be okay. But if not, sin is crouching out that door waiting for you. The enemy will come in like a slithering snake because you've given him an opportunity because you're focused on your trials and your tribulations and not on Christ. Amen? Jesus said, you will have peace in me. You will have peace in me. Your peace is going to be in God, not in your circumstances. Let's go on. <clears throat> the Bible says here. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. There he was, kicking it with the, with the Christians. Amen. Verse 7. The Lord said to Satan, from where? From where do you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, just roaming around on the earth and walking around on it. Listen to this. I want you to catch this. <clears throat> I want you to catch this. The Lord asked him where he was coming from. He says, roaming around. Walking the earth. Do what I do. No, I'm here kicking back with you and your children. Verse 7. Verse, verse 8. The Lord said to Satan, listen to this. <clears throat> the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Amen. Catch this. Catch this. Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on earth, 
a blameless and upright man, fearing God, amen, and turning away from evil. Verse 9, Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Amen. Have you not made a fence around him, a hedge of protection around him and his house and all that he has on every side? I mean, isn't he protected by you? Amen. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land, he says. This is Satan. He knows what's going on. He's verse 11. He says, but reach out with your hand now and touch all that he has. He will certainly curse you. To your face, he told God. Amen. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not reach out. Amen. Only do not reach out and put your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Did you catch that message right there? Did you catch that passage? I don't want you to miss this. I'm going to bring you revelation right now. <clears throat> Verse 8. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Rebecca? Have you considered my servant Sylvia? Have you considered my servant Mary Allen? Have you considered, amen? Have you considered this person? Why would God say and allow Satan free reign on Job? He said, have you considered my servant Job? You know why? Because he knew that Job was a blameless, upright, God-fearing man who would turn away from evil. But Satan says, well, look it, but you've got a hedge of protection around him. You've got an encampment of angels around him. You've blessed his work. You've increased his, his, his riches. Amen? But God says, verse 11, he says, no, Satan says, but reach out with your hand now and touch all that he has. He will certainly curse you to your face. Satan was sure that no matter what he did, amen, no matter what he did, eventually Job was going to curse God. Now we know the story of Job. We know everything that happened to him, amen. He lost everything that he had. He lost all his kids. He lost all his spoils. Everything that he had, he lost, amen. Even his homeboys, even his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? But Job stood fast. He, he didn't bow down, amen. He didn't give in. Even when he was covered with boils all over his body, he didn't give in. See, God knew that Satan, that Job wouldn't bow down to Satan. That Job wouldn't curse God. He knew. God knew. And he said, have you considered my servant Job, amen? Have you considered, my brothers and sisters, have you considered, have you considered Rebecca? Have you considered Mary Ellen? Have you considered John? Because I know who they are, and I know that they're not going to bow down. I know that they're not going to throw the towel in. I know that they're not going to quit. I know that they're not going to give up. See, God believed enough in Job, and God believes enough in you today that you have to believe enough in yourself the way God believes enough in you when you go through your trials and tribulations. Amen? When you face your hardship, God believes enough in you just like he said, have you considered my servant Job? He says, have you considered so and so? Have you considered, amen? Because God believes in, enough in you that you got to believe in yourself. The way God believes in you that you're going to come out of the refiner's fire pure as gold, amen? Purified, amen? Purified. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Every branch that doesn't produce fruit, we cut it off. It's painful to get things cut out of your life, but it's necessary for your growth. Amen? 
And if God believed enough in Job, he believes enough in you. He's entrusted you with that trial. He's entrusted you with that tribulation. That you got to believe in yourself. Amen. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not I could do some things. I could do all things. I could face all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 16, he says, in me you will have peace, but in this world you have tribulation. But behold, I overcome the world. I became victorious and you will become victorious. Amen. We've got to trust ourselves that we can get through this the way God trusts you with that trial. He believes in you. He believes in you. And you got to believe in yourself. If God Almighty, if the Savior of this world, if the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Counselor, <coughs> believe in you, you got to believe in yourself. Amen? It doesn't matter how hard it gets. And for all you people that believe that God only gives us more than we can handle, that's a lie from the pit of hell, man. Because that's not biblical. If you take a look at the Bible and you read, man, Paul will talk about the many things that he faced that he was beyond comprehension, more than he could understand and more than he could handle. Amen? So those that, oh, oh God only gives us more than that, that's a lie from the pit of hell and stop saying that. Because that's not true. That's not biblical. Read your word and you'll understand it. There's people that faced more than they could handle. Paul was one of them. <clears throat> but there was many more. Amen? And to those of you that, that say that God only gives gives uh, the strongest battles to the strongest war. That's not true either. He give, They come to everybody. Anybody and everybody. Amen? But I'm going to tell you this. <clears throat> that God believes enough in you. He's entrusted you with that trial. He's given you, allowed that trial to come your way. Because He believes in you. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. Stop having your pity parties. I'm not saying it's not hard. It's hard. That it's not hard. Yeah, we go through some trials. I go through some things. And more so when you get closer to God and you're climbing that ladder of ministry. And you're climbing and climbing and getting closer and closer to God. The enemy is always there. And there's always more trials to come. Amen? But we don't quit. Amen? We don't quit. Amen? Satan was allowed to test Job. God said, have you considered... My servant Job. Amen. I want you to understand that all that we go through is for our own good. But like I said, God believes in you. You got to believe in yourself. Don't ask why. I've never, ever, ever asked God why on anything that I've ever faced. 2000 and, uh, 2009 2008 September 2008 I had to stay in my uh, I had to live in my suburban I dropped my son off at my pastor's and first lady's house to stay there and live with them they said they would watch him and I would sleep in my car not too many people knew I was a pastor one person knew and he told me, Pastor John, he goes, you're a pastor, bro. You shouldn't be going through this. What makes me exempt from going through those things? What makes me exempt? Because I'm a pastor now. That, that doesn't exempt me from going through those trials and tribulations. I stayed in my car from September. I bounced around, stayed in a garage here and there for a little while before they told me to move on. They didn't like the Holy Spirit there. I slept in my suburban again. But every time I laid my head down at night, I had the peace of God. I had the peace of the Lord. I lay down, I pray, get in prayer, and I lay down in my back seat in my suburban, and I, I had the peace of God. And the Lord told me, you know, I didn't ask God why, but He revealed to me why. He says, how are you going to preach me as Jehovah Jireh if you don't watch me provide for you? I got to go through those things. Jesus said in the book of Matthew that when all these people said they were going to follow Him, hey Amen. Jesus says the foxes and the birds of the air have a place to lay their head, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay His head. Amen. That tells us that it's going to get uncomfortable serving the Lord. Amen. But Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. God 
is with us through our trials. Amen. And just as Satan was allowed, Satan was given permission to to test Job. You and I, God gives us permission, gives Satan permission sometimes to test us. So count it all joy. Amen. James says, count it all joy when you face various trials. That's because God believes enough in you, brothers and sisters, that God was thinking of you today, that today we got to bring growth to sister so-and-so. Today we got to bring growth to brother John. Today we got to bring growth, and we got to do it this way. It's the only way that it could be done. You got to go through the refiner's fire, amen? Praise God I'm going through the refiner's fire. James says, count it all joy, amen? Count it all joy. When you learn to be joyous in the things that bring you hardship, to be able to rejoice in the things that, that come against you, when you got the opposition and you're able to raise your hands and praise the Lord, I don't know about you, <clears throat> but I love being in the presence of God. I love going to church and worshiping, man. The worshipers, the ministers of music, just drawing us into the presence of the Lord and the presence of God, just coming and meeting us right there. That, that man, I raise my hands and the tears begin to fall. Amen? And I know that when I'm going through things, it's because God is looking out for my best interest and he thought enough about me today that he allowed me to go through what I'm going through for my best interest. Amen. And when you begin to think like that, when you begin to think like that, that, that this is for my benefit. That this is God bringing growth. That this is God believing in me. This is God entrusting me with this trial. You begin to see things differently. You begin to walk differently. You begin to praise God differently. Amen. You be say like hallelujah. Praise the Lord for this trial and tribulation. And then the devil starts looking at like, like hmm. What's going on here? Hmm. Because God said have you considered my servant so and so? Amen. Have you considered? Because he knew that Job wasn't going to bow down to the enemy. He knew that Job wasn't going to curse God. And when it happens to you, he knows that you're going to get through it. He believes in you that you got to believe in yourself. Don't go back to the world. Don't stop praying. Don't stop reading. Keep pressing in, man. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Keep going, keep going. Even if you got to get on your knees and crawl, even if you got to get prostrate on your stomach and lay it out before the Lord, you keep pressing in. You keep going. You keep going, amen? You keep going. You don't quit because Jesus didn't quit on you when he went to that cross. He didn't quit on you when he took the beatings. He didn't quit on you when he took the lashes. He didn't quit on you when he had to carry his cross down to Golgotha, amen? He didn't quit on you, amen? So don't you quit. Know that God thought of you. That God thinks of you. That God wants to purify you. That's the objective. To become Christ-like and to reach more souls. Amen. <laughs> James 1 Peter, I mean 1 Peter 3.17. 1 Peter 3.17 says this. For it is better, if God should will it so, that you suffer for doing what is right, rather for doing what is wrong. Did you catch it? It is better, if God should will it, that you suffer for doing what is right. For walking with God, that if you're going to suffer, you're going to suffer because you're doing things right. God would rather have you suffer for doing things right, than suffer for doing things wrong because the consequences for doing things wrong it's a heavy price to pay it's a heavy price to pay I've seen people I know people and this hurts I've known people that have been in ministry been real involved real active in ministry and somewhere along the line something came their way and they shrunk back and they shrunk back because they began to stop praying they began to stop praying, and they began to stop reading, and they allowed the enemy in. Amen? And I know some people that have left God. They left God, and they went back to the world. And they started putting a needle back in their arm again. And they're dead. There was a young man back in the 90s that lived with me. He came out of Victory Outreach home when I was a Victory Outreach, and he came to live with me, him and his daughter. 
and I seen him starting to slip. You know, and I tried to get at him and try to get him. He would come home with glasses on, and I knew what was going on. You know, the nodding out. I see. I knew. I told him he had to leave my house. I can't have this in my house. I got my. I was married at the time. My wife here, my kids here. I can't have that man. He had to leave. A few days later, they found him dead in a bathroom, with a needle in his arm at a bar. So many people. Amen. You can't leave God. Because the Bible says you become seven times worse than what you were before you came to Christ. I know what I was in that world. And to become seven times worse than that, it's not what I want. Amen. First Peter 3.17 says this, For it is better that God should will it that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. You're going to face trials and tribulations. Jesus warned us in John 16 that we're going to face these things. But he says, Behold, in me you have peace. In the world you face tribulations. In Christ we will have peace. If you remain in God, you will be okay. If you remain in God, you will be okay. Job remained in God and he was okay. We know the story, man. This guy was blessed ten times more than what he had. Amen? Because he remained in God. Because he remained in God. Amen? When people leave the, leave the, leave the Lord, the devil parades them around. He takes him like little puppet and he prays him around like, look at this one was yours, God. But I got him now. Amen? Don't allow the enemy to parade you around. Just because you're facing some hardship, just because you're facing some trials, don't allow the devil to parade you around, man. Keep pressing in. If you got to reach out to me, man, reach out to me. I've got people that reach out to me a lot, messengers, whatever. Reach out, man. I'll get on there and pray with you, man. I will pray with you, and if I have to, I'll drive to where you're at, anoint you with oil, and lay hands on you. Amen? I'm not afraid to travel for the things of God. Amen? If you feel you can't go somewhere else, come to me. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I know better than to kick somebody when they're down. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to encourage you. I'm not even going to preach to you. I'm going to hear you. If you want to rant, rave, cuss, scream, yell, call me. Reach out to me. I'll listen to you, and when we're done, when you're done, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you, amen? But don't stay down. Don't go back. Amen? Because he says, For it is better that God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right than suffer for doing what is wrong. There's a lot of suffering out there for doing what is wrong. There's a lot of suffering, amen? There's a lot of suffering out there. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. One more scripture I want to share with you. It's in Luke <clears throat> chapter 22, verse 31. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, the tonto again, Satan, has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Amen. Jesus came to Peter, says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you. Satan came to Christ and asked to have Peter. Amen. Satan came to Job, I mean to God, and Job gave him permission. Amen? Now listen to Jesus. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Verse 32, listen to what Jesus tells him. But I have prayed. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Amen? He says, I've prayed for you. He's allowed Satan to sift Peter. He says, but I prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Meaning, man, guess what? That you're going to suffer for doing what is right rather than suffer for doing what is wrong. That your faith may not fail. And he goes, and when you're done, and when you turn away from it, when you're done with it, strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your sisters. Amen? That's what I'm doing here today. I am equipping the saints because you know what? A lot of times these messages aren't coming across the pulpit. People are telling you, man, to be all that you can be in the army of God, to chase your dreams, to do this, to go after that, go after what's in your heart's desire. The word of the Lord says, do good, dwell in his land, cultivate faithfulness, trust in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. But it's got to be according to the will of God. See, people are chasing their dreams. People are chasing a job. People are chasing prosperity. But God says, you read the word of God, He says, deny yourself and deny your life and pick up your cross. 
Meaning put your dreams aside. Put your life aside and live for me. Live for me. And these messages aren't coming across the pulpit enough to where people are stagnant in Christ. Amen. Amen. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Jesus says, but I pray for you that your faith may not fail. Jesus believed in Peter that his faith wasn't going to fail. And he said, when you're done, and when you're done, and you turn, strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your sisters. Strengthen them. And that's what God has me doing. Equipping the saints. Equipping the saints. These messages that I bring across at the Lord, all the way when we started last year, you know it was 11 months ago? When we shared when we broke down the book of Ephesians that was 11 months ago and those are messages of what God has told me to do amen I'm not going to preach to you a prosperity gospel hear me I'm not that's not who I am I'm going to give you the word of God the way God gives it to me and I'm going to share it with you I'm going to bring it to you amen and if it ouches if it hurts praise God Amen. If it's offensive, praise God. Because the word of God says this word becomes a stumbling block, an offense to some. Amen. You get offended because you're not in the word of God. You're not walking with God. <laughs> Amen. But he said that I have prayed for you. Jesus believes in you. God believes in you. And I pray that after tonight, that you have a deeper understanding of why you're going through trials and tribulations and how to walk through them. Rejoice. Count it all joy. James says. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Just like Moses. Keep your hands raised. You win the battle. Bring them down. Lower them down. You begin to lose. Amen. If you can't keep your hands raised by yourself, get a brother and a sister. Say, stand with me. I'm going to keep my hands raised. And let's praise God. Let's praise God together. Amen. Years ago, I was going through the divorce of my mother and my kids back in 2000. And me and two other brothers, we used to get together every day for two hours. Amen. We would get together. I was working night shift. One of them was on transition and getting hired. And the other one was, he made his own work hours. So we would get together every morning and pray for two hours. And we would lift each other up. We would lift each other up, man. We would intercede on behalf of each other. We lay hands until all three of us were broken before the Lord, man. That went on for a couple of months. Just helping each other get through it. Amen. Helping each other get through it. But remember this. Jesus said, I have prayed for you. When the enemy comes and asks for permission to sift you, Jesus said, I have prayed for you. That your faith, amen, will not fail. And a lot of times when we go through trials, it's because God said, have you considered my servant? Have you considered my servant? God believes enough in you that you got to believe enough in yourself. Amen. God has entrusted you with that trial. Come out of it. Purify it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. That's the word of the Lord for tonight. Amen. I pray that it bless you. I pray that it minister to you. I pray that you share it. Because I know that you know, along with you, there are other people that are going through trials and tribulations and don't have an understanding of why. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to bow our heads this evening. I'm going to pray this prayer and you can repeat it with me if you want. You don't have to. You can say it out loud. You can say it to yourself. We can't hear you. Amen. But I'm going to say it. And then after I say this prayer, I'm going to pray for you guys. Bow your heads. Father, I come before you tonight. And I thank you for your word, God. I ask for forgiveness of my sins, of anything I said or done that was not of you, Lord. Of any doubt that I may have had, God, about the trials and tribulations that I face. Maybe I shrunk back, God. Maybe I didn't raise my hands and praise you as I should. Like Moses in the midst of the battle. But Lord, I ask for forgiveness tonight, God. And I ask you back into my life tonight, Jesus. I invite you into my life, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that, that I would believe in myself the way that you believe in me. When you said, have you considered my servant Job? Jesus, that I would believe in myself the way that you believed in Peter. 
when you prayed for him and said you pray that his faith wouldn't fail. I pray, God, that my faith does not fail. I could recommit my life to you tonight, Father God, and I ask you to help me from this day forward to walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we pray this evening once again, Lord, we pray for those that have heard this message, God, and I pray that it was revelation for their lives and they have an understanding of the trials and tribulations that we go through, Father God. No one is exempt, God. No matter who you are, what position you hold, God. We know that the enemy is going to come, God. And sometimes he comes because he's given permission to, to sift, swift us, Father God, to sift us. Or like Job, have you considered my servant? But nevertheless, Lord, I pray that they stand and they stand on solid ground, God. So that when the enemy comes, God, and the storms come, the trials come, God, that their house would still be standing, Father God. I pray that you would encamp their angels around them, Lord. Watch over them and strengthen them, God. Those that are weak, that you give them your strength. We thank you, God, for your wonderful word, Father God, for your love, mercy, and grace, and sovereignty that has been bestowed upon our lives. We give you all the honor and all the glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. You have a good night. Amen. Jesus loves you, and I love you. Share the message. See you in two weeks.